I don't think it would be wrong to say Wild Tangent was an unsung hero of many childhoods. Their gaming service came with many Windows computers in the early 2000s and offered a wide variety of free trials for people to play. Wild Tangent is still around today, but their games drastically differ in style from how they used to. What changed about them? Apart from many companies that worked under the corporation going out of business or being bought out, Wild Tangent themselves took a few steps in different directions throughout their existence. Nowadays, most of the games featured on their website are either puzzles or card games. Also, Emoji Pop. From looking around, there's one factor that makes them significantly different from how they used to be. Their games and marketing have become a lot less character-centered. Allow me to explain what I mean. In the early days of Wild Tangent, their service would feature anything from puzzles to platformers to space shooters to pretty much anything. However, many of their popular games feature unique characters with cool designs and whole worlds built around them. Characters like Lily from Crystal Maze, Otto from Otto's Magic Blocks, and even Slider had unique personalities with whole universes surrounding them. Even if some games were simple, they were still fun and had a certain charm to them. Even if you prefer modern Wild Tangent games over the classic ones, you can't deny they feel entirely different. One of the biggest things to come out of this era of character central games was the one that gave Wild Tangent its first major mascot. This series was such a big deal, it managed to get a release on the Nintendo DS. You guessed it, we're going to talk about Polar Bowler. With a name like Polar Bowler, you can't help but wonder if someone said that name as a joke and they decided to expand on the concept. It has a nice ring to it. Polar Bowler was a simple bowling game that took place in the Arctic and used an assortment of winter-themed characters as stand-ins for the bowling ball. Polar Bowler was a huge marketing point for Wild Tangent, the polar bear becoming something of a symbol for the company. They even gave him an official Twitter account that had a weird obsession with Ellen. Polar Bowler itself is a cute little take on bowling, providing unique environments with charming characters for players to bowl through. This led to a whole series of games featuring the same characters along with some new ones, playing different sports. For the record, I know this is my third video in a row to feature bowling in some capacity. It's only a matter of time before I rebrand as a bowling channel. To start off, we only have one character and one stage to choose from. The character in question is, of course, the unnamed polar bear, and the stage in question is Chill Pin Alley. Before we do anything else, just sit back and listen to that music. That is a sweet melody if I've ever heard one. I must say, one thing I absolutely love about old Wild Tangent games is how incredible the soundtracks can be. I recommend looking into the music for games like Word Symphony and Bounce Symphony. The nostalgia hits hard. In the stage, you shoot the polar bear toward the pins in some arctic zone by launching him with a big rubber band. Also, take a look at that monkey and mammoth frozen up above. It's a nice little touch that adds uniqueness to the lane. Along the path, you encounter power-ups that help you get the best possible score. The coins give you bonus points, the snowflake vaporizes the pins, making it a very powerful upgrade, the golden thing electrocutes the pins, and the bomb blows them up. These effects are fun to watch and can really shake up any old game of bowling. However, sometimes it's best to avoid the power-ups entirely because they can completely steer you in the wrong direction. You can also turn them off, but where's the fun in that? I also have to admit, it took me an embarrassingly long time to realize I could pull the rubber band for an even better launch. The first stage you unlock is called Candy Lane, which is made entirely out of candy. There are also gumballs, I think, flying through the skies overhead. Maybe it's just me, but I would totally eat this whole place. The first character you unlock is a walrus on a very cool set of skis. I'm not sure if there are any differences between characters, but I've always seemed to have the best luck with this guy. As a kid playing on the free demo that was available on older computers, I don't recall unlocking anything more than these two characters and these two lanes. Let's see what I missed. The next stage is called Iceberg Alley, which is out at sea with icebergs floating all around you. Then we have the lane with my personal favorite name, Papa Stumpy Lane. It's in the middle of a forest, and the pins are inside a big tree stump that looks like an old man. I'm guessing that's Papa Stumpy. Oh god, his eyes open. The next stage is Muckluck Lanes, which is a tiny little village under Aurora Borealis. This is actually strange, because the last three lanes are all underneath the Aurora Lights, but the one actually called Aurora Bowl is the one you can hardly see them in. 
The other characters include a penguin on a big frisbee thing, a snowman that rolls into a ball to hit the pins, a human that rams his belongings into the pins, and Santa Claus who just chills in his sleigh. These characters would become essential in the Polar Bowler series, and many of them would appear in later games. The one that always gave me the most trouble was the penguin. I could hardly land any good hits with him. Can't get enough of the Polar Bowler mascot? Fear not, because this evolved into one of Wild Tangent's biggest franchises. Literally a month after Polar Bowler came out, they released Polar Golfer. They must have really expected this to take off. The Polar Bear, the Walrus, the Penguin, and Santa Claus crossed over into this one, but I guess the snowman melted. This takes place in a strange blend of an Arctic zone and a tropical one. You can control the ball and navigate it through loops in the sky to get bonus points. You also get this ASMR announcer. Oh dear, that's out of bounds. That's out of bounds, I'm afraid. Sorry, that's out of bounds. You also have these audience members taunting you the whole time. The newcomers include an elf, oh, a Scottish gopher, a moose that looks like he just walked out of Arthur, and a fox. I once saw someone say that the fox was responsible for their furry awakening, so take that as you will. Surprisingly, they decided to expand on this game more than their bowling one because they made a sequel to it. Polar Golfer Pineapple Cup took place in a Polynesian-styled course. They also got rid of the two female characters and replaced them with Hula Girl and one of the Tiki enemies from Crystal Maze. For those who don't know, Crystal Maze is another Wild Tangent game, and a very good one at that. I was not prepared for this crossover. Wild Tangent deserves an extended universe. I want to see a game that features all their classic mascots going on an adventure together. Someone please make that. Later in 2005, they would release Polar Tubing, which wasn't quite as notable as the ones before it. Polar Bowler's back in his tube, and he's racing through waterfall obstacles against other characters. Just take one look at this. There is so much going on, it's hard to keep up with. I should also mention this game has voice acting. Wanna play chicken? La la la. It's pretty surreal to hear these characters saying words for the first time. Unlike the games before it, there are only six characters and half of them are new. They include an Inuit girl, a southern catfish, and a mermaid who's obsessed with herself. The stages are named after real-life locations and are modified to look like those places. They're very high energy and everything under the sun is coming after you in them. The walrus and moose actually appear as in-stage obstacles too. This was definitely trying to be a party game in the same vein as Mario Party, but it fell a little short. They're pretty much all races with one extra stage per level. My personal favorites are the one where you have to knock your opponents out of the ring and the one where you play hot potato with a bomb. However, these particular stages go on forever and threaten to never end. New rounds just keep starting with extra players being thrown in. In the races, you can do additional tasks like collect treasure chests or shoot targets, which give you medals, but these can be pretty challenging and take a lot of practice. At the end of each stage, you get to race a character in order to unlock them. It's a pretty efficient way of unlocking people. Also, check out the final stage, Vesuvius. Oh my god, this is awesome! I genuinely did not expect them to do something like this. However, with how anxiety-inducing these stages are, it looks and feels a lot more like hell than Mount Vesuvius. That's an appropriate way to describe this game. It makes me anxious. There isn't a calm moment from the second you press the start button. It's also extremely unforgiving. You can go from being in first place by a long shot to making one small mistake, then you're so far in last it's impossible to recover. Also, this game is particularly buggy. All that being said, I kinda like it. Yeah, it's hard and messy in some areas, but I still get a rush out of playing it. It's charming, and I do like the new characters, especially the catfish. However, it seems like it's supposed to be a neat little party game to celebrate the franchise, so why not fill it with existing characters? It's hard to get attached to them when they keep getting thrown out with every new game. Congratulations to the Polar Bear, Penguin, and Santa for being the only ones that stick around. Then, Polar Bowler went silent. We did not have another Polar Bowler game until 2008 with the release of Polar Pool. By now, they were fully embracing the concept of Polar Bowler perpetually existing in a swimming tube. Gone were the days of golfing, this is what Polar Bowler is all about. 
I love how in the character select screen, the other characters are frozen until you unlock them. The three mainstays are here, but the fox is back too. I bet a certain someone was happy about that. Also, the penguin and the walrus look completely different. That's right, the walrus is back too. The graphics are enhanced, and the game is essentially pool, but with you as the ball. It's really difficult for me because I suck at pool, but I still enjoy it. When you knock a starred ball into a hole, some kind of animal comes out. Let me tell you, throwing these guys around the course can be too much fun. Many power-ups are the same as they were in the original game, but you also get a whirlpool, a hurricane, and a power-up that freezes balls so you can break them. There's also a mode where you can challenge the computer in a game of 8-ball. It's pretty cool. In the coming year, Polar Bowler would get its big break with a release on the Nintendo DS. This game mostly replicated the original and modified it to suit the console. Most of the original features remained intact, so I have to commend them for retaining our nostalgia. Polar Bowler would receive a new game in 2013 called Polar Bowler First Frame, which was just a small variation of the first game. There probably wasn't much high demand for the series by then. It was made to be a little app, more so than a computer game, so it isn't quite as refined. The final Polar Bowler game would come out in 2017, and... Well, it's a way to go out. Polar Slots was a Vegas-style slots machine game that's playable on the internet. There really isn't much to it. It's fine as a small add-on for fans of the series, but not really as a full game. We haven't heard anything about Polar Bowler since this game, and it seems Wild Tangent has stopped marketing it altogether. Kind of a shame that a franchise that was once their flagship series has been so forgotten. How did it fare overall? To be honest, for a small series, it did pretty good. As the series went on, the games remained fun and loaded with features to keep you interested the whole time. We never really got to see any major universe expansion or character interactions or anything like that, but I feel like we still got to know this world and the people in it pretty well. The concept of the Polar Bowler series is great and has a lot of potential, but I wish they expanded on it a lot more than they did. They probably just didn't have the budget for it. Overall, Polar Bowler was an enjoyable franchise that brought us tons of childhood nostalgia, along with Slider, Otto's Magic Blocks, Crystal Maze, Dark Orbit, and all the other great Wild Tangent creations. This made for a pretty nice addition to our childhoods. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory. Oh dear, that's out of bounds.